All right, so in part two, we're going to be moving our geometry from 3D Studio Max into Unreal Engine. And here you'll see I'm on the Epic Games launcher. Uh, this is where we start um, and launch Unreal Engine. Uh, you can read some community stuff. Uh, there's learning, marketplaces, libraries. Um, you can see here that I have a 34 gig install right now of Unreal Engine stuff. And I've had versions 4.09 all the way up now. We're at 4.17 and 4.18 is coming sometime soon. These are all old projects. But what I'm going to do is launch uh, 4.17 by clicking the launch button. That brings us to this uh, where we can open our projects, but we're going to be creating a new project. We'll create a blank project with no starter content, and I'm naming mine BP test underscore one. So create that file, and it will take a few seconds. It sets up the directories, it gets everything organized, the variable text files, all that stuff is pulled into one directory for our kind of our program that we're going to be developing. To remember that this is ultimately going to be turned into an executable file that people can launch on their computer and not something we're working on in Unreal Engine. So it has to set up all those directories. Quickly what you see here is kind of uh, some content creation stuff. We can put in lights and cameras, some geometry. Here is our world outliner. This shows everything that's in the scene. All of these are, are called actors. We have static mesh actors and so forth. If I click any one of these things, I can look at its details. We have new plugins, so I'm just dismiss that. Um, so I can control anything about the floor here. The other thing we have is our content browser. This is where we import our geometry. So I'm going to go right-clicking in here to create a new folder. And I'll call this geometry. In our geometry folder, this is where we want to import our FBX. So I'll click import on my desktop. We went from Rhino to Max, and then from Max to Unreal. And this is my Max to Unreal uh, FBX file. Open that. There's a couple clicks that I need to do. First, we're not a skeletal mesh. Next, we are, uh, let's see, we're not combining meshes, so it's important that this is unchecked. We have lots of different layers and pieces in this file. We do not need them to be unified. And down here, I can see that it will be uh, importing materials. That's fine, we can let it do that. So we'll say import all. It will take just a couple seconds to kind of go through and parse everything and bring everything over into Unreal Engine. In those settings, I could have had an op I had an option, sorry, that uh, I could import at a, a given scale. And because I was working in foot to inches, I need to convert this over to centimeters. Unreal's units are centimeters. So no smoothing groups found, not a big deal. You can see there's all our geometry. So I can click from here to here and drag and drop it into the scene. Right now, if I look up, there's the model. And I'm going to uniformly scale everything right now. So I'm going to lock the scale and set it to 3.54. That's a foot to inch conversion. It's a much bigger model now. Parts of it are missing. We're going to deal with that in a second. And up here, I have move, rotate, and scale. Those are key mapped to W, E, and R. So with W uh, and my Z, I'm actually, I know now I'm going to drop this down 3,000 units. And what that does, if I fly around the model here, is just put it down low into the space. Uh, ultimately, this is all kind of relative. Uh, I'm going to click here on my the default floor just to put a base in. So I'm going to use R to scale it. I'm going to scale the X and Y at the same time. And then I'm going to scale the X axis. I'll hit W to move it. And I'll move this down. And then I can look and see if I want to move this up into space. So that just clips right into the base. All right, a few things still to fix. First, uh, our shadows are really, really dark. So under lights, I want to drag in a skylight. Now we actually can see some, some elements. I want to check the scale. And so up here in my world outliner, I can look for the player start right here. This is where the player will begin the game. I'll move this up into space, move this over. And I can zoom in by flying over using the W, A, S, and D keys while I have the right click held down. Uh, I'm going to move the player start just down into space, and we can imagine that's about the size of a human. Um, so let's move it up so it's just there. The bench seems a little tall, but it looks like the scale is pretty close to right, and it's something we can, you know, change in the future. A few last things to look at. Some of our faces are missing, right? We don't have that face there. And if I come fly over here, we don't have a face there. But if I come on this side, I see it. So what that means is that our mesh is either not working as a two-sided mesh or our materials are not being viewed as uh, a double-sided material. 
So the easiest thing to do is to change our material. So these are the two materials that imported with the model. We're going to replace them, but for right now, let's double click Material 47, set this to two sided, and save. It's updating that material right now. We can close our material editor, and now we can see that face is double sided. Material 2 is everything else. Again, we'll set this to two sided and save. At least this way, we can see our model um, you know, in all of its geometry. So as we fly around here, it's looking pretty good. Um, all right. And then just to test it out, we're going to do one thing. We're going to build the model. What this will do is kind of go through and look at all the paths uh, and lighting, kind of pre-compute everything we need. It says that the world lighting needs to be rebuilt. Great. It's building lighting now. Building lighting. This will take a while when we get to the kind of complete object, the full thing. And it says max to unreal frame, UV maps are overlapped by 93%. That's a problem. Uh, max to Unreal Statue, they're overlapped by 6.3%. Less of a problem, but is a problem. So both of these things are things that we'd want to go back to our Unwrap in 3D Studio Max and take a double look at, make sure that they actually spaced out correctly. Um, so what this would mean is that if we look, um, most of our stuff looks good. We have some weird glitches there. But here, if we look at the frame, it, it's going to misbehave. It's, it's going to, light and shadow are going to show up in weird, really strange spaces. Looking at the statue, you can see there's some glitches already at the seams. Um, not too, too bad. It's only 6.3%. The frames are the big issue. Um, but that's one thing that we'll have to overcome. And now that I've built the engine here, I can play it. And I'm, ah, let's see, I'm going to be stuck underneath. So I can fly around in kind of the rendered game. Uh, in later steps, you can see here I'm colliding with the roof. I'm not able to get into the space. I'm finally able to glitch my way in, maybe. Um, but we're going to be looking at collisions. We're going to look at generating materials. We're going to look at um, setting up those UVs in a better way. Um, and that all comes next. But this was the first workflow on moving from Rhino to Unreal Engine. I hope that helps.